are joined by our senior advisor for national security and foreign policy. Talking about a couple of issues. First, I want to talk uh, to Rick Riddell about the president's speech. Uh, you know, Rick, we heard from a lot of members of Congress. Some who received classified briefings, some who received a non-classified briefing, but all came out basically saying, listen, what we heard of this, the American people can hear. And by the way, didn't have any answers. And then President Biden finally does address the nation on why we shot down three additional objects. I mean, there was speculation of aliens. There was speculations of uh, UFOs. And now it looks like uh, they were weather balloons. In fact, there's some weather balloon clubs tracking the loss of their balloons to the same time that these were shot down. But just your reaction to the president's address to the nation, because it left people, I think, with even more questions and concern about the judgment of our American leadership. Look, I, I'm very concerned about what's happening with the intelligence community right now. They have a credibility problem. They certainly have a, um, a plethora of money. They have enough money to be able to get their act together. If, if, if they are briefing on partial information, if they are briefing on um, pretending the information is classified when it's open source and, and unclassified, this is a big concern because it means that they're not getting the right information or, or the people aren't focused on uh, the, the right programs. So I think we've got a crisis right now with the intelligence community. Uh, it's a credibility crisis. Avril Haynes, who's the director of national intelligence, needs to come forward and be very transparent. I heard last night from several Republican senators who reached out to me to say, I am very concerned at what I'm hearing from the classified briefings and from the intelligence community. These are career intelligence officials assigned to brief members of Congress and, and senators. And the politicians are walking away saying, this is not very good information. This is a crisis. You know, it's a crisis, and it's also a crisis of confidence because we had the general in charge of uh, NORAD say that there were domain gaps in our ability to track the um, – the spy balloon that came from the Chinese government, which we know now is incorrect, that they were tracking it the entire time. Now, you were the director of national intelligence. Did he not know from his own staff that they had it tracked before he went to the American people and said, oh, there's a domain gap in our ability to track this, and we're going to have to get on top of that? I've got to believe, and, I've, and maybe it's just hope, that uh, he wasn't properly briefed because if he had – full access to the information and the information is what he said it is i'm very concerned you know that's it's to me i mean the, the whole thing it is bizarre that they sit by it out mind boggling knowing with the questions and his response is that we shot down hobby balloons or independent they've never caused any issues with civil aviation that we've got to open up an entire new federal working group on on weather balloons and and flying in the sky and how we convinced the canadians that this was a need to shoot down either over the yukon retrieving these are almost nearly impossible course, to ever get answers on and when they said they weren't they couldn't retrieve them rick of course they couldn't retrieve them they were a balloon that you could buy for uh, apparently for somewhere between 12 and 180 dollars are about 12 bucks if you want the whole package about 600 dollars. okay let's include like a camera so i rick i the, the concern that i have and this is what the american people want to know and our listeners want to know do we have these gaps or are they not communicating them clearly? Because they tried that line where they try to blame you all, your administration, for, hey, this happened under the previous administration, and at least we caught it. And what I'm wondering is, same thing with this general who got stuck out there to make the statement. They may have been doing this, the Chinese government, and they just, you, you know, the, the, the deep state just doesn't bother telling, I don't know, the director of national intelligence. So this is, this is the concern because the, the real answer is we don't know. We don't know what's going on. And the director of national intelligence, Avril Haynes, has, uh, an, uh, has an opportunity and a responsibility to come forward and to at least come clean and be transparent with the oversight committees. I think that she should come clean with the American public because when the American public doesn't believe that the intelligence community has its act together – or is acting in partisan ways or, uh, you know, selectively leaking, then that is going to absolutely uh, impact funding on Capitol Hill because the public will complain. The public will say, I don't want my congressman, my representative voting for budget increases. 
this is a real problem for her. She needs to come forward and be very transparent. Transparency is not political. Rick, we also have a horrific situation in in East Palestine, um, Ohio, and the e the FEMA response is, it, you know, this is way too big for FEMA, which is, is really scary. And Pete Buttigieg, who under his leadership at the Department of Transportation, we've had you know airplanes on the ground running into each other and near missing on landing, trains derailing, and you know and this is and he's in charge of this which maybe don't put a small town mayor in charge of one of your biggest uh cabinet departments and cabinet posts and you were on the cabinet what's your sense of all of this right now look uh you know it's it's very clear that Pete Buttigieg got his job because he was the highest ranking gay democrat and they they wanted to play uh party politics he ran for president so he had this identity politics check mark and and I think it's it's real dangerous. It's not good for the gay community. It's not good for the Democrats, and it's certainly not good for America. He's not qualified. He uh, clearly is more interested in um, irrelevant characteristics about people rather than transportation issues. He tried to make the excuse in Ohio that, hey, look, we have train derailments, thousands of them all the time. Well, we don't have thousands of train derailments with – uh, this type of chemical spill, which is toxic and detrimental to people's health. And, and he didn't speak about this for 10 days. And the first thing that he did was just a tweet and, and still took a long time to get on camera. Think about that. If, if this would have been the Trump administration and the Department of Transportation secretary didn't speak for 10 days about a disaster, this person would be already impeached because the media would have focused on it. The political class in Washington would have completely focused on it nonstop. And yet the Democrats get away with it. Uh, you don't see John Carl, who is the ABC correspondent in Washington, D.C. for ABC News. As of this morning, John Carl had not mentioned the train disaster or Pete Buttigieg and the only criticism of politicians that he had been doing is of Donald Trump in the previous administration. Yeah, I, this one to me is it's the ultimate head scratcher because they talk so much about the infrastructure rebuilding. And if they if they want to do that and again those other derailments and yes, the problem, but like you said, all those derailments, it's like all these weather balloons aren't necessarily causing the same kind of disaster. And when we do have a disaster, instead of being at the at the front lines, FEMA's response today is is literally they finally did issue a response. Is it they are they they can only be on the front lines of like a hurricane or tornado. This situation is different and more expansive than what FEMA can provide. There's got to be a federal agency that we're paying for with our taxpayer dollars that could do more to help the people in East Palestine. I I hate to say it, but it appears that the reason why the Biden administration isn't jumping to help these people is because it's in a red state of Ohio. And it doesn't it doesn't give them uh, any political chips. This is an administration that only acts in partisan political ways. And we see it time and time again. And if this happened in a blue state, you would see them moving a lot faster. Yes, they're putting all the blame. But have Mike DeWine have to run this like again. It's not and it's a, doing a, a good state, job, by the way. There's a state but, role. Yeah. But there's certainly a role for the federal government. It's why we pay taxpayer dollars to keep us safe from big events. When FEMA big cannot, disasters. they said it's too big, too too much to handle. This, you know what? They don't want to sit as re, they don't want to send their own people in and risk lawsuits. Yep. Uh, we know that's an issue with one of these bird situations. They tend to do these controlled birds, and those they go out of, out of control. Saw what happened on nine eleven with the first who came in and did all of the work. First responders. Yeah, came in and did the cancer issues there. I uh, saw Camp Lejeune. Yeah, they, had, they had to do a federal fund for that. How many decades so. it took for that to even get to that process 40 to help people. years, four decades. Yeah. So, I mean, that's the problem. Rick, we appreciate it as always.